This video will demonstrate several options for invoking a JavaScript function by choosing an option from a drop-down list and an HTML page. Simply to define the elements we're using in this example, here's our HTML source code for the page. It's rather basic as HTML is concerned. It has a select element which forms the drop-down list. It defines a form and a form would normally have an input button to submit so that the form information could be sent to an output like, like, a, like a, a page that would process that information or a server-side script. But for this example, we're only using the form as a place of reference through which we can access our drop-down list in a JavaScript. On the web page, what you see for your effort in creating that HTML is an actual drop-down list. But back to the HTML. The first thing that we need to add to this is a script. We have no script right now for that select object to call when an object is chosen. So I'm going to create a script block, an HTML special element that's designed to store JavaScript code. And in that script block, I'm going to define a function. And again, you define a function by typing the word function in lowercase and then creating your own name for the function. And you, of course, need to avoid what they call reserve words in JavaScript or words that are identified as having special meaning, like the word function itself. So I couldn't do this and expect it to work. So what I need to say here is perhaps function handle select. That's my invention. And then an open and close regular parenthesis. And that's where we will eventually put a parameter that helps us identify the select box. And then we also have to create open curly brace and curly curly brace. And that provides us with a work area where we can put the lines of code that command our page. So in our handle select, I'm going to add a comment. The purpose of the handle select will be to display an alert box. And then I'm going to put another line saying containing the selected text. And what I mean by text is with a select option, there are really two properties that are the, of most benefit to us. One is the text property of a select option. The text property is what's between the, op the option tags. The select value, it, we would enter by putting a value attribute inside the open option tag. And we would say perhaps even just the same thing, one or one. The value is what the form submission passes to an output receiving source, like a script or another page. The text is simply what's displayed for the user. So if you were to say view source on another website and look for a select option, you might see something like, um, well, let's just say um, apples. But then the value might be something like some meaningless code. Perhaps in their system that's a inventory code for apples or so on. But they wouldn't display that to the user because it is of no use to a user or, or it's unclear. So for this example, for simplicity, we're only going to work with the text of an option. But it's also important, again, as I said, to know that a value capability exists to pass something real to a receiving source. So with that out of our way, we're going to actually work with the text of these options. We're going to now configure the select element so that on change, meaning when someone chooses a different option than is, display, is currently displayed, the function handle select is called. So I will enter on change equals and then handle select. And as you can see here, I could use a double quote or a single quote to surround my function. The only rule is it has to be consistent. So if you were to pass a string value or a text statement to a function call as a parameter, you could enter something like handle select this. But at the same time, you could use different quotations. You could use double, but you have to have single on the outside. That's just to prevent some confusion later if you ever do want to pass a string value to a function. But speaking of the word this, it's a special keyword in JavaScript. It refers to the current object that you're working with. So in this case, we're working with a select object. So this references that select object, which means that I can put something like this selected index or this dot options dot length, which would tell me how many select options are here. Or I could specify this dot form. That's a really powerful keyword or key phrase. It's saying to retrieve this select options form element. Or put differently, it identifies 
the form element that contains this select item. So we're going to pass this dot form into our function and we're going to define a variable in the parameter area which is the, the parentheses of the function. We're going to call it my form. We can name it anything we like. And that's all we have to do to define that parameter that's coming into the function. So now that we have that coming in, we can work with it. So I could actually uh, reference my form when retrieving information about our control. So there's only one more item that we have to do to configure this properly. And that's that we have to define a name parameter for our select value, or select control. So we'll call this select name option list. And it's a good rule of thumb to also define an ID property when defining a name property. We'll also call that option list. They both serve different purposes when referencing the control in JavaScript. So now I'll save my file. And what I'm going to do now is actually uh, render my page. Because we are running JavaScript already, just by defining this onChange event, we're telling the page to call this function when an option is chosen. So I'm going to enter a simple line of code, alert test. And that's just going to prove to us reliably that the function is when we choose. The next important step is I need to refresh my page. And as you can see, it's trying to make sure I can run scripts and I'm telling it yes. But that's an easy mistake to make too, is to go back to the page and not know why it's not working. It was because it wasn't refreshed. So I'm choosing an option and it says test. That's a great sign. That means that our JavaScript is hooked up properly, that that we're calling the function from the select element. I'd even go further and suggest another test, and that would be to replace this word with a reference to the my form object that was passed in. With a my with with a form object, you can reference a property. There's a property called name, and that will retrieve the name defined in the HTML. So I'm going to save the form, and I'm going to go back to my web browser, and I'm going to refresh, and I'm going to choose an item and it displays the name. So we've learned a few things here. We've learned that our function call works from the option select or from the select. We've learned that the input parameter is valid and that we can reference it. So from this point forward, we can work with a reasonable comfort level that the basic building blocks are correct. So the next thing to do is to reference the select object itself, now that we know we're this far. So I'm going to get rid of that alert statement. And instead, I'm going to test that object. I'm going to make sure we can reference it. So I'll put another alert. And this time, I'll type my form referencing the input parameter dot. And then I'm going to put the name of the select object, option list. And again, I'm going to reference the options collection that's part of that form, select, pardon me, part of that select element on the form. But options has a length property. So I'm going to save this one last time, and I'm going to refresh the page. And I'm going to choose an item. And here you can see that there are 30 items in the list, which matches what we see when we render when we work with the page. So the next thing to do is to actually use that information for more than just reporting on what's on the page. The way that you know which item was selected is to work with the select elements selected index property. So we're going to define a new variable. We're going to comment out that alert statement. And we're going to declare this variable by typing var cell index. And then we're going to set it equal to the option list selected index property. So again, it's my form, the input parameter, option list, the select element, dot selected index and as you can expect 